Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I like to take science and apply it to all things plants. In today's video, we are doing a subscriber requested video. Actually one of probably the most loyal subscribers on the channel, so that's why they get a video, but requesting exactly how to bring outdoor plants inside. Now, this isn't specific to just houseplants who want to now transition indoors. This goes for vegetables such as peppers, tomatoes, coleus, decorative plants, you name it. But first, check this out. I designed this. So this is my harvest t-shirt. I had this idea that I wanted to do like a harvest one. So we have like our microscope beakers, our harvest. Anyways, it's super cool. It's gardening with science and it's unisex. It's a unisex. It comes past your butt. The ladies are going to love this. And instead of one big pocket in the middle, it has two little side pockets, which is super nice because ladies know this when you put your phone in and it sinks down here and you're walking around like this little flap flapping around. It's a girl thing. It's very irritating. <laughs> so this is it. And it, yeah, anyways, it's super cute. You guys have to go check it out. I'm not going to keep it up for ever. I'm probably only going to keep it up for like the winter ish months because sometimes that, that bar thing, the store gets too full looking and then you guys can't actually be able to make a choice. So we're going to keep this up temporarily, but it's so cute and I designed it. So go check that out. Let's get into the video. So as you can tell, my garden is done for the year. We officially got hit with some frost and everything is toast. So I'm not going to be able to really show you guys exactly what needs to be done, but I am sure as heck going to walk you through it. So ultimately there are two ways in which you can overwinter plants indoors. Now this is particular to herbaceous plants, not necessarily plants that need a bulb to live in. So when I say bulb, I mean things like dahlias and that sort of stuff. And I'll do a separate video on overwintering them indoors. This is huge if you're looking to make an identical clone of the parent plant. So fun fact, when we save seeds, we get a hybrid version of just whatever pollen ended up in that plant to make the offspring. But when we take cuttings or we bring that whole plant indoors we are preserving the parent as a whole and so therefore we are going to get the exact same characteristics from the new plant as we got from the old plant this year so when we're doing this there are two main methods the first method would be bringing the entire plant indoors and this is only going to work for some select types and the second version is going to be taking cuttings so let's first walk through how to take a cutting and what cuttings exactly we can take from the outdoors to bring inside. So we can take cuttings from any sort of plant that has a that has a herbaceous stem that's not woody. So things like vines, coleus, geraniums, tomato plants are all great examples of ones we can take cuttings from. Now the key here is not to take a cutting like we typically would on a house plant and then divide that up into a whole bunch of spare cuttings. What we actually want to do is just take the cuttings from the apical meristem. The reason for this is because there is a ton of hormones up in that stem, which means we can ultimately get those roots and just transplanting in general or rooting in general to happen much quicker. So when I'm referencing that, I'm referencing the very top portion of that plant. You want to take the top of that main stem. You want three nodes and just a couple leaves at the very end tip. So my intention is to leave these plants in place. If you missed the video on why that is, I'm using this as snow capture. That's why it looks a little gross and ratty. And you're probably thinking, why don't you clean up your dang garden? I'm leaving them in place for a reason. I want that snow capture. So here's an example of a tomato plant. You can see here that my main stem had a branching off of sorts. So actually both of these sides would work in this case if it was alive and not frost damaged. And what you want to do is you would just snap it off at this range. And again, you could do this on both sides. And then you're going to remove the nodes for a majority of this stem. So you can see I'm taking off four nodes total. 
five. So I have my top node, which is now going to have leaves and all the nodes below that will not. You want at least three nodes with no leaves attached. And then we're just going to root this either in rooting hormone in a hydroponic setup or in water. We're gonna wait for those roots to grow and then we're going to transplant it into a potting soil like we normally would. This is a direct clone of the parent, meaning that the fruits and vegetables from it are going to look identical. You have two options now. You can grow this fully indoors and then harvest the fruits from that. Or secondly, you can simply allow it to grow, continue to trim it back and reroot the trimmings from that to keep it nice and tiny until you are finally ready to transplant it outside. So you don't end up with a big old tomato plant in the house with not enough light. So those are the two ways that you would actually do this. The second way to do this would actually to be bringing the whole plant indoors, which sounds a bit crazy, but it works wonders. So I would advise you to knock off the actual soil and not bring any of your outdoor soil in you'd be shocked how many bugs are actually planning to overwinter in your soil that you will then bring indoors so to avoid that whenever possible just ensure that you're not bringing that inside and you're using fresh potting soil indoors this can include the container if you're going to reuse the container make sure you use some soapy hot water and really wash it off well worst case scenario you end up with mealies or thrips or aphids or something inside so try to avoid this whenever possible so after we've cleaned up the root ball as much as possible, so after we get it removed, we wanna clean up this root ball as much as possible. What we wanna do when we clean up this root ball is remove all the soil. If we end up with some root loss, it's not a huge deal. Now you're probably thinking, well, you always teach us that the root ball mass is you know, what's supporting this upper biomass. And if I knock off a lot of this, it won't be able to support this. And that's okay, because what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna trim this bad boy up. So in the case of peppers is a great example of one, or coleus you would wanna bring indoors and there is a risk that these leaves and stems could have mealybugs, aphids, thrips and that sort of thing on them so we actually want to trim this up as much as possible. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove all the leaves and the side shoots. All I want left are the main stems and you can go as crazy with this or not as crazy as you want if you're a nervous netty about you know trimming the actual plant up don't stress out too much by removing everything just remove what you're comfortable with and then leave the rest behind but remember nature task says you can take up off up to 30 percent of the plant and actually not compromise growth and in this case we want to compromise the growth a little bit so we're going to trim this bad boy up so this is all i have left of that initial plant is i have my main stem which actually is starting to get a little bit of a woody bark to it and then i have my two sides all of these nodes i snapped off and you can see the tips which did get hit with a little bit of frost but you can actually see the greenery and the firmness of the actual plant so this plant is likely going to overwinter just fine so this brown tip i'm going to remove so my tip that's no longer brown is about three nodes down and so i'm going to actually just cut it off at the fourth one and i mean if you don't have nails obviously use shears which i have so i don't know why i'm not using them okay so we're going to trim this up and the key here is we want to remove as much as possible. The plant is starting to slow down and kind of go into a dormancy. And so to just really make sure that it survives and adjusts to, you know, different lighting conditions, we want to remove those leaves as much as possible. So now I kind of have this bare stem looking root thing. I can actually plant this again in clean potting soil, clean container, put it under a grow light and it will begin to sprout leaves sooner rather than later. And voila, I have a jalapeno plant that's been overwintered now, I think twice. And every year it comes back bigger and bigger like a little bush. So that would be the second way to do this. This is probably the more riskier of the two when it comes to potential pests and death because there's a lot of you know, manipulation going on with the plant, but ultimately um, some plants will do better with this than others. I find that anything that is more on the herbaceous side and doesn't have, you know, the woody type stems to it, like a pepper plant, don't do as well with this and they do better with the clipping version. But so that's, you know, maybe something you want to take into consideration when choosing what plants to do this, but you can definitely overwinter pepper plant indoors. I'm gonna plant him up and I'll give you guys an update in a few months as to how he's doing. If you guys enjoyed this video, 
video be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below what plants you overwinter and why i know some of you do like more houseplant begonias and that sort of thing and then others do the food so i'd be interesting you know one guy to follow is the mighty mustache he actually overwinters some plant uh purple plants downstairs in his basement um good friend of mine so go check him out i'll talk to you guys later bye